Wednesday the 1st of January 1973, two men were found shot dead near Burnfoot, County Donegal. They had been killed by an unidentified Loyalist paramilitary group. Wednesday the 31st of January 1973, a Catholic boy, Philip Rafferty, aged 14, was abducted and killed by Loyalists in Belfast. This was the start of another violent year in Northern Ireland. We were leaving 1972 behind and little had changed. Violence was rife and murders commonplace. It was also the year that the UK joined the EEC and the year that a referendum about a united Ireland was held. This was a non-event as nationalists boycotted the referendum and so the result was an overwhelming majority to stay in the United Kingdom. Meanwhile, on a personal level, life was continuing in Cumber. On New Year's Day, we invited the in-laws and my brother and his wife for dinner. The hubby suggested we have roast duck. Now, although I considered myself a reasonably good cook, duck had never been a big part of the cuisine in either of our households. But always want to try something new, I bought the duck. I thought when putting it into the oven there didn't seem to be much meat on it, but I pressed on regardless and hoped for the best. The embarrassment when I served up one small slice of duck to each person stayed with me for many years. I've steered clear of roast duck ever since unless it's in a carton and has Marks and Spencers on it. I have had reservations about writing about 1973 and I have been procrastinating as it was a particularly tough year for me. I discovered I was pregnant at the end of January and I was delighted. Life was good and I was practicing hard for my driving test at the time and felt well. On Wednesday the 7th of February, the United Loyalist Council organized a one day general strike. It happened to coincide with my driving test. There were power cuts and roads were blocked. Many were intimidated into not going to work, but my driving test inspector turned up and with little traffic on the roads, I passed my test with flying colors. It was great to be mobile, but it did prove problematic with only one car. That was the norm in the 70s. So we spent our time organizing lifts when one of us wanted the car. I think it was 2000 before I got the keys to my very own car. I announced my pregnancy after three months, as did a colleague in my office. Our babies were due in the same week in September. I started knitting baby things, but I was not a knitter. Never have been and never will be. And so the two matinee coats I managed to finish were a disaster. My parents and my in-laws weren't exactly over the moon with the news. No hugs or congratulations. More like, how will you manage with one job? It wasn't the done thing to talk about pregnancy apparently. And so a lot of the joy that I felt quickly disappeared. Also, the religious aspect was probably high on the agenda. At the beginning of Easter week, I began to have some symptoms that were a cause for concern. The doctor was called and suggested bed rest. For four days, I lay in bed. On Good Friday, I was in such distress that Gordon took me straight to a and &E. There a doctor examined me and without any softening of the bad news, told me my baby had died in my womb. He explained that I was in labour and there was no alternative but to deliver the baby naturally. I won't go into the details, but it was one of the worst experiences of my life. I wasn't told whether it was a boy or a girl. I cried for days. I had no family near me, and I'm not sure Gordon and I, as a young couple, knew how to deal with the loss. We didn't talk much about it, and my grief was compounded when it was suggested to me that my continuing to work had possibly contributed to the miscarriage. So along with the heartache of losing our baby, I now had the guilt that it might have been my own fault. I know now that that was not the case. After a few weeks recovering, I went back to work. The hard bit was that those who didn't know about the miscarriage kept asking me when the baby was due. We tried to accept that many first pregnancies end in miscarriage and this wouldn't happen next time but I felt alone and probably needed some follow-up counselling, but I was discharged from hospital and had no choice but to get on with it. It was rarely mentioned again. Around this time, and probably feeling the need to be parents, we acquired a dog. I say acquired because it was never my intention to have one. We visited friends whose dog had just had puppies. 
we left with a small black and white terrier who we christened Cotton, after the small cigars. He was a lively pup and didn't take long to acquaint himself with the surrounding countryside. One whiff of freedom and he was away, chasing the cows in the farmer's field behind us and returning home smelling of badger's poo. Yuck. There were no restrictions on dogs in the 70s, so we headed into Cumber and met up with his mates. Many nights he wouldn't return until midnight, at which time he would stand at the front door barking until one of us stumbled downstairs to let him in. I think he thought he was a cat. However, we loved him and put up with him until one day he was chasing cars, one of his favourite pastimes, and was hit by one of the said cars, and we had to make a decision to have him put down. The house was empty without him, and I swore never to have another dog. I have kept my word. Tuesday the 12th of June 1973. Six Protestant civilians aged between 60 and 76 were killed when a car bomb exploded in Railway Road, Coleraine. The attack was carried out by the Irish Republican Army, the IRA, who had given an inadequate warning of the bomb. We made the decision that as we were going to have two salaries coming in for another while, it was time to replace the small country-style suite we had for something a bit more substantial and comfortable. We went into Wright's Arcade in Newton Ards where Mr Wright was serving that day. He was very kind and we chatted. When he heard what had happened, he gave us a great bargain on his suite and also threw in a coffee table, which we have until this day. When the suite was delivered, it was way too big for our tiny living room, but we loved it and we had plenty of room to stretch out. Thursday the 16th of August 1973, two members of the IRA died when a mortar bomb exploded prematurely during an attack on the army at a base in Pomeroy. September was a challenging time. My work colleague had her baby and it was difficult to visit her in hospital. Her baby arrived a couple of days after mine would have been due. However, by now we were trying again and we were having a lot of fun trying. We had changed her car around this time. We brought it from a small garage at the bottom of University Street. It was a Morris something or other and I guess he saw us coming. After a couple of months the exhaust developed a hole. What was it with us and exhausts? The sound as a car set off in the morning was noisy to say the least. No sleep ins for the neighbours. Gordon spent hours under the car rather than in it, plastering the exhaust with gun gum, a seal for exhausts. It would hold for a few days and then blow again. Like the Mini Cooper, which was our first car, the floor in the back was also proving effective as an air conditioning system. And if I remember correctly, I don't think the heater worked, but it just about got us from A to B, so that was a bonus. The year ended with a statement from the Northern Ireland Executive following its first meeting. The statement set out the Executive's hopes for the future and called on people in Northern Ireland to allow 1974 to be the year of reconciliation. Yes, that was 1974. I guess reconciliation in Northern Ireland is a very, very slow process. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like it, post a comment and share it with your friends. You can also subscribe for free to my YouTube channel to be informed of future episodes. Thank you.